Good evening, students, colleagues, parents, alumni, board members, grandparents, and friends of GNS. It is great to see you. My name is Glenn Zedarako, if you don't know me. Dr. Zed, if you have a hard time with Zedarako, like most people. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here tonight. And on behalf of all of our community, I want to say thank you for coming to a very special evening of joy and celebration. We have an amazing announcement and a wonderful band concert tonight. Thank you so much for making time to attend, show your support, and celebrate our school, Glen Lyon Norfolk School. Look at this turnout. You're amazing. You're wonderful. It's so pleasing to see you here living two of our core values, caring and community. Thank you so very much for coming. Together, you are all integral to ensuring that Glenline Norfolk School continues to do our very best to realize our vision of preparing outstanding citizens of character who will contribute to the world through their leadership, their commitments to service, and their understanding that they are responsible for the future of our communities. In short, our school and your engagement is enormously important to ensuring that GNS students and graduates for the next 105 years and beyond continue to make many, many positive differences in the world. It's my pleasure to recognize four former heads of GNS who have joined us tonight. Each has contributed a great deal to the school and our ability to achieve our vision. Their continued leadership and support is invaluable. Please join me in recognizing Hamish Simpson, Peggy Wilmot, David Brooks, and Simon Bruce Lockhart. For all of you, it's important to note that these former heads are just like you, and you are just like them. You're integral to our continued success as we work to improve in an ongoing fashion. So, a little bit more about tonight, but not much. <laughs> this evening's announcement is certain to delight you. It will allow you to have an even higher degree of confidence in our school's ability to become even better. I think it will inspire you to continue to help the school. In fact, this, evening announcement, this evening's announcement enables GNS to move forward in a very significant way as we work to realize one of our key success factors from our strategic plan, which is transforming our campuses. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making the GNS community wonderful today and every day and in the days to come. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure to invite our deputy head, Chad Holton, to keep the evening moving. Have a great night, everyone. We had 260 RSVPs and you all came. Thank you, my goodness. All right, so I want to start uh, this evening to take a moment to give you a very brief history lesson and I promised my sister it would be brief. So, for those of you that don't know, Major Ian Simpson founded Glenline Preparatory School in 1932. Along with his wife, Florence, Major Simpson led Glen Lyon for the next 32 years until 1964, when he decided to retire and pass the reins to his son, Hamish. A graduate of GPS himself, when Hamish became head, he was months shy of his 27th birthday. 
and he would spend the next 18 years in that role. No easy feat. After that, he spent the rest of his career first at Pearson College in Machosan, and then Upper Canada College in Toronto. Hamish and his lovely wife, Trisha, who's here in the front row, then retired to Salt Spring Island, but have maintained a close connection to the school and to the Denford family in particular. It is an absolute honor for me to invite Hamish to the podium to say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hamish Simpson. If you were cold before I, when you arrived, you're colder now, having had to listen to those words. <laughs> and I brought my best salt spring uh, jacket on here. To, uh, I'm glad I brought it because it is uh, a little chilly. Uh, I guess I get invited now and then to, uh, to return to the school because uh, of my age and, uh, I have, <laughs> and I have some institutional memory, which... Uh, uh, a lot of people don't have, though I, I do see a number of people here tonight that uh, recognize me and are still friendly and talk and uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, but I just wanted to just talk a little bit about the past because uh, we might not be here tonight certainly celebrating this family, uh, the Denford family, uh, if in 1972 in the spring uh, I was the uh, only head of the school, but I, in those days, it, I met every parent, prospective parent, and prospective pupil first. Uh, that was important, and uh, that sort of changed today. If schools have got bigger, we had only probably 130, 140, 150 boys at the school at Glenline in those days. And uh, the headmaster of Brentwood College School, which was also very young in those days, David McKenzie and I used to joke together, because really all we had to offer really was the view. Was the <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have uh, many classrooms and uh, that were that were really really good and uh, so we all we tried to schedule these appointments with parents uh, when the sun was shining and, it, <laughs> and if we had heavy rain we would just uh, sort of make an excuse and say could you come another day <laughs> anyway uh, it was the spring of 1972. One March day, I remember it very, very well. I don't remember all the details, which is probably a good thing. But uh, Gordon and Alice Denford arrived uh, and made an appointment in my office with their young son, Christopher, sitting just down here. Doesn't look much different. And, <laughs> and we had an interview, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to tell you that, that they agreed to enroll their son, Chris, he was into grade three, which was our lowest grade in, in the school in those days. And Chris stayed right through the eight years uh, until through grade 10, which was our, our final year. We didn't, in those days, have enough facilities or enough space to have grades 11 and 12. And that wasn't until 1987 when the amalgamation uh, with Norfolk House made the Lion Norfolk School. Gordon and Alice Denford were very supportive parents. Uh, Alice. Uh, she uh, worked with the auxiliary and became its president uh, for a year or two during in those eight years. And Gordon himself uh, joined the board of governors. Uh, we, the school was in its very early, very early stages of having a board of governors. And uh, it was only in 1971, I think, it started. And Gordon became chairman of the board for two years in the 70s, which that wouldn't surprise you. And, <laughs> Uh, because of his contribution, it was, it was fantastic. So my association goes back with the family, both for myself and for the school, some 46 years, uh, until 1972. I just want to say that every independent school needs families like the Denfords. They are people who have been supportive, uh, it can't do enough, and has continued over the years. After Chris left and his years came, then he, of course, has come on board and helped his father. And we've had this wonderful period of time uh, where the family has been together. And uh, it, it has really been truly wonderful. I thought when I was asked to say a few words, this would be easy. But it's not really easy because there's so much one could say. 
But I just want to say that I personally was thrilled when I heard that the, and I'm not sure I meant nothing to say this, but uh, there's going to be uh, a big announcement. I can't, I can't possibly reveal what it is. <laughs> I've got a feeling it's going to start with a D and end with a D, but it might be somewhere behind you. <laughs> but we're uh, really, Gordon. Are you awake still? You're still awake. <laughs> It's, it's, um, I, I won't go into all the things over these years, but Gordon and I have kept in touch, and uh, uh, we've worked together at other institutions, and uh, he's helped me, and to have Christopher along, and I should also mention his sister Laura, who's sitting there, uh, you know, looking at me sort of sideways and saying, stop, for them to say, it's been long enough. I just want to say that uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to say a few words. Uh, this has been a, a, a marvelous family, a great friendship, and uh, we're very, very privileged that uh, uh, Gordon and the family have continued to associate, to do great things, and continue to inspire the rest of us to continue to work for this, I think, fantastic school. Uh, you still got it, Hamish? <laughs> All right. What, what I really want to know is, when you were sitting in that office, if you would have said no to admitting Chris. It was total. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a very different thing. Yeah. <laughs> I won't repeat that for those of you at the back. Well, I want to introduce you uh, to the Denford family this evening. We have four Denfords in attendance with us tonight. So Laura, right, Chris, Anne, and of course, Gordon. But I want to take a, a moment to recognize another Denford who sadly is not able to join us, Allison, the matriarch of the family who passed away in 2016. And to call the Denford family a fixture in our community would be a dramatic understatement. No fewer than seven Denfords have attended either Glenline Preparatory, Norfolk Coast School, or GNS. And Chris and I and Hamish were on the ferry last week and we were doing the math. And those seven students have spent a cumulative time of 83 years at GNS, <laughs> between 1960 and today. And as I was quick to point out on the ferry, that's 83 years of tuition. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> But I want to turn our attention now to take a moment to speak about one Denford in particular, without whom none of us would be here tonight. Gordon. He first became a school parent in 1960. Since then, he has seen three children and four grandchildren attend our schools. As you heard earlier, he served as a governor on both Norfolk Coast School and Glenline Preparatory School, including a period as chair of the board. And he still volunteers today. He currently serves as a director on the Glenline Norfolk School Foundation. So, for nearly 60 years, Gordon has attended openings, closings, dedications, meetings, and everything in between. He's been a parent, a grandparent, a volunteer, a supporter, a cheerleader, a donor, an advisor, and a wonderful friend to our school. He has given so much of himself and he's asked for nothing in return. And for anybody that was at Berwick House today, yet again, there was Gordon hosting the grade two to three evening for all of our, all of our kids. So honestly, Gordon, thank you so much for making our school exceptional. Tonight we are here to recognize and celebrate the latest example of the Denford family's leadership and support for our school. As I'm sure you may be aware, GNS is planning for a capital campaign that will transform our Beach Drive and Pemberton Woods campuses, creating facilities that will allow our students to follow their dreams for the next 100 years and beyond. And although this campaign 
does not officially launch until October the 4th of 2019, please put that in your calendars, the Denfords have already stepped forward in a truly remarkable way, providing GNS with the second largest donation ever given to an independent school west of Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly privileged and humbled to announce that the Denfords have committed $5 million to the GNS Wonder Campaign. and Laura, on behalf of the GNS community, past, present, and future, I want to express our deepest thanks to you and your family for your leadership, your commitment, and your vision. Together, you have launched our school into a trajectory that will take us to heights that before we could only dream about, perhaps only wonder about. Gordon, would you please come up and say a few words? Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. I'm going to begin my remarks uh, with telling you about a life-altering event that happened to me at the age of nine years. Now this may cause you to think that this is going to be a very long evening. <laughs> Trust me, it's not. <laughs> at that time, I was attending a uh, parish school named St. Mary Redcliffe in Bristol, England, where I was born. My class teacher was Mrs. Andrews, who one day approached my parents with the news that their only child was doing very well. So well, in fact, that the following year, I should apply to write examinations for a scholarship at each of two prestigious British schools, British schools. My mom and dad agreed, and she then asked for permission to tutor me after school for an extra hour from time to time to prepare me for the two examinations. Mom and Dad were enthusiastic about the program. Me, not so much. <laughs> After school was playtime with my uh, friends, not extra class time. Of course, the tutoring took place, and a year later, I wrote both exams, and Cotton, school, uh, Cotton Grammar School awarded me a scholarship and my life changed forever. My two years at Cottom opened my eyes and mind to language, culture, the arts, mathematics, and the sciences. Had I been able to continue and complete that period of my education, I would have applied for a scholarship to either the University of Bristol or Cambridge, as Cottom was connected to both. World War II and the almost daily bombing of Bristol that followed Dunkirk after May 1940 led in August to my sudden evacuation to Canada at the age of 13 with less than 24 hours notice. Throughout the years, the importance, respect, and love of education that I learned at Cotton has never left me. I have been privileged to serve on the boards of Menlan and Norfolk House Schools, Pearson College, the Camosun Foundation, and Royal Roads University. And a few years ago, I also served as the chairman of the steering committee for the creation of the Certificate and Diploma of Business Administration programs of the Division of Continuing Studies at the University of Victoria. After the completion of this wonderful hall, Chris kept me informed of the development of the master plans of the upgrade and renewal of the beach and Pemberton Woods campuses. I agreed with his suggestion that we become the lead donor, and that it be made on behalf of our family, and that he and I should fund it equally. Our family firmly believes in GNS, and our contribution on the eve 
of a capital campaign is our way of giving back for future generations. This is an emotional event for me that this evening, the family of a kid from Bristol who had been fortunate to win a scholarship at a respected school many years ago is going to be honored by an equally respected school in Victoria tonight with the name of this hall. Thank you. Top up your glasses. We're going to move our way over here and they're going to unveil the sign. of not only this gift, but the extraordinary support the Denfords have provided Glenline Norfolk School of the last half century, we are honored and delighted to officially rededicate the hall as, pull away, hey, Denford Hall. 